the how to series as we know is a, a series of sessions or interactions oh. based on the scripture in titus chapter 2 from verse 3 to 5 that encourages older women to live godly lives oh. and also to train the younger women in several areas of life and when you look at verse 5 it says that the objective of all of this is so that the word of god will not be maligned so that the word of god will be exalted for each one of us calls ourselves christians we read a bible we pray we believe in god we believe in the lord jesus christ so the holy spirit gathers us from time to time that we may we may feed from him and learn practically how we can apply godly principles to our lives and that is what we do in these how-to series now over the last couple of weeks we have been looking at how to enter into god's victory in our situations and the first week we 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 learned how to do that taking the word of god last week by god's grace we um discussed how to do that in prayer and indeed we, we had a special session that spoke to us about how to hear god for ourselves and we've shared the recordings with everyone tonight we have uh, another session that is looking at how to wait how to wait for the manifestation of the answer to your prayer and why is this relevant it's relevant because the lord jesus christ said to us that when we pray when we stand praying when we ask anything in prayer we are to believe that we have received it and then we will have it so you can look at it in mark chapter 11 verse 24 mark chapter 11 verse 24 you see that scripture so it's two steps at the point of prayer you believe that you have received it and often the lord in all his mercy will give us certain promises certain confirmations in one way or the other and so you know that the lord has said yes now between that point and when that prayer that you have asked or that answer that you have received when you have it there is sometimes a gap it can be a gap in of a few seconds a few minutes days weeks or years a lifetime for some times and for certain and, and it's so important how we understand that space and how to walk within that space so that we will be able we will be ready to inherit what the lord our god has in store for us when the answer to our prayers are manifested the word of God, Mark eleven twenty four 24 says, therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. And so that is one uh, perspective of it that we want to talk about. So I thank God for drawing us together tonight um, for this engagement. I will actually um, ask Pastor Adline to, in, to, to introduce our speaker for the night uh, to us before she takes over. But I would like for you and I to take a moment, just commit your heart to the Lord. Just ask the Father, thank him for bringing us to this point and ask him to put you at ready to hear exactly what he wants you to hear because each one must hear what what is applicable to them by the spirit of god shall we pray please pray in the name of jesus in the name of Jesus. And please pray for our speaker. Why don't you ask the Lord to guide our speaker that she may speak only by the Spirit of God. Let the anointing of God 
be massive upon her tonight that she may speak by the power of the Spirit of God. It's so important that the Lord speaks to us himself and he will use her, use what he's taking her through, use everything that he wants to use. And ultimately, we must hear God. We must see Jesus. Please pray for her. Pray for her. Pray for her that her ministry will be effective to us this night. I know that this is God's will for us. In the name of Jesus. Mandaria Cabadosa, Pandori, but a Sendoria Cadosa Lapa, Nimandaria to Suchandara Maca, and Shanduru Bacadesa. In the name of Jesus. Father, we are grateful. Thank you so much once again. Thank you for hearing us. In Jesus' name. Amen. So, sisters, before I hand over to Pastor Adline, I just want to remind us that, as usual, our resource person will share with us for some time. And uh, then afterwards, we will have the opportunity for questions. Indeed, as she speaks, if there are any questions that you have, feel free to put them in the chat window. You can send it directly to me in the chat window, or you can send it to everyone. Whatever your preferences is fine. We'll pick those up and, and ask them. Um, when we have the question time also, you will have the opportunity to unmute and to ask whatever questions that um, you need to ask so that there will be greater clarity for all of us. Um, so welcome and God bless you. Pastor that mine? Please. Yes. If it might, I will um, hand over to you. Yes, please. Thank you very much, Sister Efe. God bless you. All right. Welcome, ladies. Good evening. Thank you so much for making time to spend with us this evening. Um, all right. So our guest speaker is, is Mrs. Nana Ado. She fellowships with me at Agape House, and her husband is one of our deacons. The first time that I heard her testimony, my husband and I heard their testimony, we were blown away. We were blown away. Their testimony was so powerful. It made an impact on us till date. Like we, we, we really remember it. And not just me. I was sharing with somebody um, not too long ago, and she actually also made reference to this particular testimony. I can see that they are living a believer's walk. You see, we have to walk the talk. And so I believe that tonight she will, she will share with us and I believe that we will all be blessed and to be very powerful. She's also a woman that opens up her home. She has hosted at, at home. We've had, we've eaten meals in her home. She's hosted up. She's a woman who is often smiling, often welcoming, and, you know, often has a good word for us. I believe that she's somebody who is able to speak to younger women and teach younger women, you know, just as the Lord is calling us to in this how-to series. And so that's why I believe the Holy Spirit led us to select her to be the one to speak to us tonight. So ladies, without much ado, I would like to call Mrs. Nana Ado up to, to unmute her mic and just have the floor and speak to us as the Holy Spirit leads you. Thank you very much so much. Thank you so much. You're welcome. You're welcome, Nana. Thank you. God bless. All right, okay, so let's see whether I can reach. Okay, Sister Efe, can you just take over a little while whilst I try to reach Mrs. Yes, yes thank yes. you. That's fine. Okay. I'm sure that she has. I've, I have unmuted. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes please. Can. Okay, all right. Good. Hallelujah. Thank you very much. It's an honor. It's a great honor to be invited to speak to you this evening. I don't take it lightly because I realize I'm speaking to lives. I'm speaking to people's destinies. What I say or break somebody's, you know, change the course of their lives. And it's a huge responsibility. So 
I'm asking the Holy Spirit to guide us. I have prayed, but I am a woman of worship. I really love worship. That's where I live. So I'll just like us, you know, I'd just like you to join me, you know, in a very short, very, very, very short worship before we um, start um, this evening session, if that's okay with you. Yes, please, that is fine. Okay. Um, because of the way sometimes you know how it is on Zoom when several people yes. are singing, yes. we will yes. we will likely all remain on mute but be singing Absolutely. You know, okay. along with you. Okay. So I'll just okay, I'll just carry on and let's just get on. God of Abraham, God of Isaac, you are a covenant keeping God. There is no one like you, covenant keeping God. There is no one like you. You are the Alpha and Omega. There is no one like you. You are God. From beginning to the end, there's no place for argument. You are God all by yourself. Oh, you are God. From beginning to the end, there's no place for argument. You are God all by yourself. So here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you are my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy. All together one da full to me. Thank you. It's gone, it's muted. You take total control in the name of Jesus, Lord. As I speak, Father, this evening, you speak through me. None of me, all of you, in the name of Jesus. I thank you that the ladies here, Father, would leave tonight encouraged, energized, strengthened, equipped with a clear direction to know and go out there to possess what belongs to them. We submit totally to you and we ask Holy Spirit, you come and take total control of this meeting in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. It's okay for me to go Amen. on. Yes, yes, yay, we can see you. Oh, yes. <laughs> Okay, all right. So this evening, um, you know, I've been asked to share on your topic, which is one that is um, interesting. I like it very much because it shows um, it's practical. I'm a very practical person. Yes, theory is okay, but I always like you to tell me the how to, you know. So this is really very much up my street because it's exactly what you need to know the roadmap to get from A. To Z. Now, I'm not going to profess to say that, you know, this is the perfect roadmap. I'm just really going to share my, our experience, um, you know, what we went through and what we did in the time. Some of it, we followed God's principles that we knew. Some of it, with hindsight, we have come to realize that it all contributed to seeing the manifestation of what we were believing God for. 
Now, um, I just want to lay just a little bit of foundation so you know you understand where I'm, I'm coming from. Um, my husband and I, um, you know, um, we, we met in the UK. We came down to Ghana to get married and went back to, because our parents wanted us to do it in Ghana. So we did that. Um, we were not um, um, born again Christians at the time we, we got married. Um, so it was after we got married, I think about three or four years, somewhere around 98 is when um, we became born again Christians. We gave our lives to Christ. Now, after 21 years of marriage, I conceived at age 51. And at age 52, I gave birth to our twin daughters, Nessa and Joda. Now, I just want to lay down some, you know, just to make certain things clear. I'm not a faith guru. I don't profess to be one. I'm just one of us, just one of you, a born again child of God that just went to God with a burning desire to have children. Now you have to understand that I was married. I am married, goodness. I am married <laughs> to an only son. <laughs> So you can imagine what's, what's, you know, after a few years with no offspring, things began to heat up. Now we started with um, believing God for a child, for the fruit of the womb. When we realized it was delaying, we changed our confession and we started asking for twins. I said, Lord, just give me a boy and a girl. I want one stop shop and I'm done. Because why? Because we're not growing any younger. I was growing older. I didn't think I would have the luxury of time to have one and wait for a few years to have the other. I just needed boom, that done. So we changed, you know, um, what we were our expectation. Now we were blessed to be in a church whose focus was the teaching on the family. I mean, it was a major, that was what it was all about. They, they taught on the family so well. And our pastor was so, such a gifted teacher of the word that made us grounded and rooted in the word of God right from onset. I mean, when we go to church, we have our notebooks and our pens and we are taking down notes, not just us, as in the whole church, it was the culture, because he was really teaching us the word. So we got to know the word. But one thing that we got to know because of their focus on the family was, it, you know, we learned right from the onset that the primary, the primary, um, what do you call it? Um, the primary um, uh, Underlining, um, what do you call it about um, marriage? The primary cause for marriage was not to have children, but it was for the two to become one flesh. So we got to know that right from the beginning, the purpose, the primary purpose of marriage was for the two to become one flesh and procreation was not the primary purpose. Now that helped in the sense of that settled things for us. For me as a woman, as you can imagine, and, and, and then for my husband, because he was in the same church, you know, he learned as well. So then he understood and stood with me. That was one thing I was really blessed to have. My husband stood with me in believing and trusting God. Now it was a process. And that's what I would like to share this evening um, on the process. You know, um, I said at the beginning that having gone through it, some of it we knew we were applying the word of God, but some of it with hindsight, we've come to realize that all, all this contributed, you know, to us having the manifestation of what we have now. So the first thing is knowing God. 
we were fortunate that we started right from the onset with a real good teaching and understanding of the word of God. And we're made to understand that the word of God was it. We had to know God. And if you don't know God, I mean, how can you say you trust him? You've got to know him and believe that he is. And that he's, he's the God of impossibility. The word of God says in Luke 1, is anything too difficult or wonderful for him? He can do anything. And then to understand that he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He does not change. He's the same God who left and uh, told Moses to go before the Pharaoh and make all, do all those things, led the Israelites, took them. I mean, the, the same God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, the same, our God. He's the same. He doesn't change. And then the overwhelming one is he lives in the perpetual now. So we have times and seasons. We have months and years. And God lives in the perpetual now. So it's all of it is one block for him. And then he decides that, okay, I put the blotch here. This is when it needs to happen. But we need to get to know God for who he is. And if you get that settled in you, you know in your knower that one, his thoughts for you are thoughts of good and not of evil. He said, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. God is not schizophrenic that he says all these things and then he would withhold things from you. It does not make sense. But if you get to know him, you will settle that. In your spirit that he says his thoughts for me are thoughts of good and not of evil so if that is the case then you know let me examine first examine the situation because sometimes it's not that the prayer is not working sometimes it could be us ourselves sometimes it could be other forces that are holding back the answer but it is important for us to examine the situation again but when you know god and you understand you get it into your spirit it's so crucial that you know him it settles you because if i know and trust you that if i come to you you have something that i desire and you will give it to me i'll come confidently and if you haven't given it to me i know it's just a matter of time but that comes from knowing him really for who he is. Now, the second point, I had to try and put this in the point form, even as I shared our testimony alongside. So then the second point was to have a childlike faith. You know, you've just got to just throw yourself in it and stop calculating and reasoning. Because guess what? I've come to realize, he never does it the way we think he would. His ways are past our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. His ways are past finding. He will never do it the way you are expecting him to do it. So if you are going to look at, because interestingly enough, you know, we say, yes, we prayed and we've handed it over to God. But in our mind, you know, in our subconscious, we have this, plan and think okay if he's doing it i will see a b c d then i know he's doing it and that is what we have to guard against because you will not see when he's doing it he will just be working in the spirit it's just like a plant when it's growing we plant a seed we don't see anything all you do is you faithfully water it and then the leaf comes on and you say, oh, the plant is growing. But no, the roots have been established before that. But we don't see the roots being established. But without the roots, that plant can't come up. So you don't see anything and you think nothing is happening. But something is happening. And that's the spiritual. Because obviously what we see now all comes out of the spiritual. So that is, the, that is why... We should, you just have a childlike faith. You know, my children come to me and they say, oh, mommy, I want this, or mommy, I want that. They don't, they, they don't even think about whether I can or can't, or they just know that 
you know, you're my mother, I, you, you give it to me. They know, and how is because they, they know me and they know that if I can, I will do it. Even if I can't, I'll go to certain lengths to do for them. So that's the thing about childlike faith. You just don't calculate and try to understand and work it because we will, you will not get it. <laughs> His ways are not our ways. Look at, just let's look at um, 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 King Jehoshaphat and when he had to go to war. Anytime he would have the victory, but every time it's a different strategy God gave him. The strategy is never repeated. He goes in, this time he says, he goes in, he says, go this way, do it this way. They go, they get the victory. The next time he says, no, gives him another strategy. He doesn't follow or repeat the strategy from before. And that's God. Moses was denied seeing the promised land because God said, speak. And he struck. I never said you should strike. I said, speak. So basically, you've missed it. But that's the thing about childlike faith. Just believe. Fear not, only believe. Like a child, just throw yourself. You know, a child will just throw themselves, knowing that their parent will just catch them. They will know that the parents will not let them fall or make them get hurt. So you just throw themselves. That's what we have to try to do. And it comes from practicing. You've got to, we've got to practice it. How does that happen? From knowing God and spending time in his word. It's so crucial that we spend time in his word because it's in the word that you get to know him. Spend time. Don't, it's not about how many chapters you read in a day. You're not in competition or in race with anybody when you have something in front of you. It's you and God. So you just take your time and read. You go to read over again. You know, I realize when you take your time and you read, you notice certain things that you did not notice before and yet that scripture is not new to you that passage of scripture is not new to you you've read it before but suddenly something jumps up at you and you think ah oh, but i never noticed that before so spend time in the word because the word must be near you in your mouth and then childlike faith just throw yourself and believe now the next, the next thing was to put your faith in action. Because the word tells us faith without corresponding action is dead. You know, I think faith has become like a cliche with Christians. We don't have faith, faith, faith. Yes, we know faith is trust and confidence in God. But the point is you have to understand how, first of all, do we get faith? And then you can apply that faith. But I'll come to that at a later stage. So put your faith in action. So it said, faith without corresponding action is dead. How did I do my, I needed, I'm a practical person. So I told myself, every month I will buy something for baby. And I was not buying like clothing items necessarily. Yes, I did buy a few, but I would buy maybe baby grows and I'll buy neutral. Um, and then I'll buy, you know, things for, but every month, I remember sometimes, you know, at a point my husband was like, I mean, <laughs> What, what what is all what is all this? Why are you buying these things? So sometimes I'll hide them from him, but I'll make sure every month I go to John Lewis and I'll spend time and look around and find that little gadget, not so expensive that I can, you know, buy, but it was my faith contact. The other thing that we did was to set up a room in our house as a baby room. Yes. We bought a court. I was not pregnant or anything. So like there was anything showing that 
absolutely nothing. We were going purely by our faith without corresponding action because faith must be seen. If you really say that you believe what you have prayed, then you must act it out. And you must realize that this is between you and God. So it's not everything that you can share with people. You've got to zero people out. People that you don't think are people of faith, that would stand with you. You just got to zero them out because it will interfere with what you are believing God for. So we did up a whole room, bought a baby cot, did it up, you know, bought little baby gadgets and everything. And then every morning, I'll go in there and look around. And I'll just say, Lord, I thank you that my children are sleeping in this court. And I will just try and picture the scene of having a baby in there. And then I'll walk away. But we had it there. So every day, it was before our eyes. We could see it every day. And then I was buying my little things from John Lewis, the centers I'll go to uh, Phoenix Brain Cross when they have a sale. It was only when they had a sale. Then I'll go to the designer section. You know, when you're uh, an expectant mother, you have these grand dreams of, you know, putting the best things on your child and all of that. But here I am just doing this faith walk thing. So it's just my faith action. So when they have a sale, then I'll go through the sale and I'll wait till the sale comes to the very end. You know, and then I'll look through and I got some good eggs, good bargains. And believe it or not, my girls wore those things that I bought. Every single one of them. We used every single one of them. And when I was pregnant, I was on bed rest. I didn't have the luxury of walking around and looking around in the shop and choosing and saying, mm, I would like, no. I was on bed rest and could not care two hoots about all of that. All I wanted was go through this, Lord, let these children come out healthy, strong, and me out because I was not in a comfortable position at all. So all those things that I was buying over the years, I did not know. I knew I was doing my corresponding action of faith, but God knew that actually, come the time, you will not be in a position to go and buy the things that you need. So really, this is your time for equipping yourself. I did not know that. I had to rely on my husband, and then he would come to me all alarmed because, you see, I'm so particular. I'm a very, you know, I dot my eyes and cross my teeth. Not everything just goes, you know. So... He come to me and then he would say, you know, he has to go to, this is when, just before we had the girls, we had to go out of the country to have them. And he comes to me and he says, um, you know, I've been given a list from the hospital. Um, they say I should buy it. So what do I buy? I said, buy anything. Just buy anything. <laughs> I was just not feeling up to it to do any. I said, and he was just so alarmed. So he would go to the shop. And then he go and talk to a sales assistant and say, I have this list and go purely by what the sales assistant would say. And then he'll come and he show it to me and some of it um, I disapprove, but I just wouldn't say anything. I just keep quiet and say, mm -hmm, it's okay. We just, just accept it because where I was, that was not important at all. So that was my corresponding action with faith, which later on I realized that <laughs> there was a reason for it. Another corresponding action was my, my younger sister had, I mean, she got married after me and everything, but she had her child well before me. So interestingly enough, when my mother came from Ghana to take care of her, where they lived, you know, you had to climb some stairs. And my mother said, no, you know, I, I, I'm not doing these stairs. So my sister had to come and live with us during that time when my mother was there to take care of her child. And her child slept in the baby cot that we had provided in the baby room that we had set up for our children. My sister's daughter slept in there. But the other thing was, she gave me all, you know, most of us, I'm sure a lot of mothers would relate to that. 
you buy things for your children and before they can wear them, before you get around to putting it on them, they've outgrown it. So she had lots of things that were new that her daughter didn't wear. Some of them she wore, but they were excellent in good condition. So she had, and she takes good care of stuff. So she said, no, no, you know, I have these lovely things, you know, do you, do you, would you like them? I said, give me everything that you can. So I had a bag full, actually not a bag, two bags full. Some of them were new baby grows and all my little knickknacks that I had bought. And then clothing from my niece, from new dresses to socks, to just name it, even to a winter coat, nice new ones, all in a bag. And sometimes I'll just bring them down and open it up and take them out one by one. And I'll say, Lord, where are my children? And sometimes I'll stand in the mirror, in front of the mirror and do my hand like this, like a mother carrying a baby. And I'll say, Lord, I'm trusting you. Then I'll go like this. I'm trusting you for our children. For our son, because we're believing God for a boy and a girl, our son and our daughter, and we had names for them. I'll come to that. But that was my faith, our faith, corresponding action to our faith. You cannot say you are in faith and not do anything, a corresponding action. Whether it's that job you're trusting for, that contract, there has to be a corresponding action. That house that you want to build, have an architectural drawing done. Where you are imagining that you put it, go and see that site. Go and find that land. Find out even the cost of it. What it entails to, you know, when you, all these things sound like, ooh, ooh, ooh it's all this, that faith. If it was real, will you do that? So, if you really say you believed the word then, and you have faith, then you have to put corresponding action to that faith. The next point was to use your imagination. You know, the word says that he does exceedingly abundantly above what you can even think or imagine. Imagine, close your eyes, imagine yourself in that place, in that job, having that healing, whatever that illness is preventing you from doing, imagine yourself doing it. Now, coming back to my corresponding action. So if it's to do with sickness, for example, then by faith, it will not be easy. And I'm not just saying this because we've worked that work as well. That is for another time. But if, for example, it's the walking that is the problem, if you take or even attempt to take a step whilst you are declaring the word, the next day, believe me, as you do it and you declare the word, before I realize you are taking one step, then another step, and then it goes on. But there's a always a corresponding action to your faith, which you must do to validate that faith that you say you have. Now, the next thing, which is a very, so the imagination, you see, because we have our physical imagination and spiritual imagination. For example, if I just told you that, hmm, I can see a beach, you are not going to see B-A-C-H that I'm talking about you imagining a beach. I said, hmm, and it's a quite sandy beach. I'm forming a picture in your mind. And it has all these, you know, palm, coconut trees all alongside, and it has all um, chalets, it has, I mean, I'm forming a picture. It's not physical, but it is in your mind. And sometimes it can be so real, you can see it, but guess what? The more you do it, the more you visit that, the more you rehearse and you practice that, the more it becomes your reality. The more it becomes your reality. 
it is a powerful tool that God didn't give to us just for giving sake. He gave it to us to help us with our work and we must not undermine it. You know, I, um, let me go to the next point. The next point, which is a very important point is about declaration, speaking the word. We have to find the word of God pertaining to that challenge that you have and write it down and speak it religiously every day. We had our confession sheets, I think about 10 of them. It's a shame I don't have them here. I mean, for 15 years, we were confessing every day. In, at the time we started initially, you know, every once in a while, you know, we, we, we haven't confessed, we haven't done our confession for, you know, we can say, hey, goodness, we haven't done our confession that we'll pick it up again. But then when we really decided we were zooming in and focusing, we had our confession sheet. We spelled out everything. I'm a joyful mother of children. I, I mean, I'm a fruitful woman. I, I, I mean, I try like only plants around, around about our table. I, I, I haven't had them. We spelled out our children's names. We had the name for a boy and a girl because we were believing God for twins. We went to the because I know that God is a God of detail. So because of that, we spelled out everything. We even decided, you know, okay, you know, if the boy, the boy will have your nose because your nose is not nice or he'll have your mouth because your mouth, I mean, with, with each other, you know, we, we just, and then we wrote it down. We wrote everything down, spelled it out there and we will take it and we'll declare it, we'll confess it together we would declare it, we would speak and speak and speak. We kept on speaking and speaking and speaking and speaking for 15 years. The thing about that, the declaration is you're confessing, but it becomes your reality. And you seem to be in this world, you and God. Nobody else matters. So it doesn't matter what anybody else around you is seeing. You are thoroughly convinced because you've been speaking and speaking and speaking and speaking. It's just a matter of time that it becomes a reality. On this declaration in our church in London, I had two, you know, we had the number of friends there. But there was these two particular um, Nigerian sisters. And, you know, it was a small church. So everybody knows your story. So, but it got to a point where I made it obvious that nobody had access to come and talk to me about my situation because it was too much. You know, people dreaming about you. So you have a boy and da da and da 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 da. And I thought, no, I have to draw. There should be a boundary here, you know, but not a wall, a gate, so I can open and let who I think should come in and close it when I think, no, you can't come in. And there are these two sisters, Nigerian sisters. And I think one of the, those times, you know, I mean, I had said it, we had been declaring so much that I will boldly say, that, oh, you know, I'm, I'm having twins. Oh, a boy and a girl. Some people would laugh and go away, but it didn't matter to me. It was between me and God. But then these girls told me, one of them just told me and said, oh, Nana, do you know um, um, what the mother of twins is in our dialect in Europe? I said, no. They said, oh, it's Iya Beji. So, you know, from now on, I'm not going to call you Nana again. I'm going to call you Iya Beji. Do you know, I embraced it so much. One day, something happened. Very interesting. We had some real Iya Bejis in our church. We had some mothers of twins in our church. And we happened to be standing out after a service, me and a couple of other ladies, with an Iya Beji there. So she comes and she never called me. She never, from that day, she never called me by my name, Nana, 
she always called me Iyabeji. So she comes and then she says, Iyabeji. And she was referring to that at the time, real Iyabeji. So I, we both turned. Then she realized, she said, oh, um, no, no, not you Iyabeji, but this Iyabeji. But it had become such a part of me. I had embraced it and accepted it such that when I heard Iyabeji, I'll turn. Because as far as I was concerned, that was my name. I had been declaring and speaking it. It had become my reality. How was I, how were we able to just carry on? Because yes, that we hadn't seen the manifestation of that, but God was doing certain things. Every once in a while, he'll bring someone along. Who would, and I'm not talking about just anybody, somebody who doesn't even know us or anything. And it's usually a minister of the word. We've, we had a white American, we had Dick Mills, who I'm sure Dick Mills has passed now because at the time Dick Mills was 81 years old at the time. He had an unusual kind of ministry where he just calls you and quotes the word of God concerning your life. And it is, I'm talking accurate. We had Dick Mills, we had a number of ministers who don't know us anything, just come and then, so, we hadn't seen manifestation, but we knew something was happening in the spirit because God, I think, was his way of encouraging us to say, stay on, stay on track, don't go off. You bring somebody in and the person would say something, a word here, a word there, and it just kept us. So we just kept on with our declarations, kept declaring and declaring and declaring. We kept speaking and speaking. There's a, 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 a right chap comes. He says, speak and speak and speak until you are blue in the face and speak and we'll continue to speak. Because why? Because the word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword. It is powerful. It is able to, do, it does not return void. It accomplishes that for which it is sent forth to do. And we believed that. So we were sending the word out. Whatever it is that was standing in the way, wh whatever, whatever, we were just letting this sword of the spirit out. This sword, that is a two-edged sword. So it cuts both ways. It's going in, it's cutting on both sides. It's coming out, it's cutting on both sides. We just kept speaking the word. Speaking the word. That was all the weapon we had. We had decided that we were sticking with God. When I had come up and given my husband options, he would just blank me out. And I thought, hey, what is going on? And the pressure, as you can imagine, is on me. I'm the woman, aren't I? So the fault is mine, naturally. So the pressure was, and he's not interested. He's like, no, if God will not do it, then that's it, then so be it. But one thing as well that we did as well was we were faithful. <clears throat> Excuse me. We put our hands to the plow and we worked in church. Not because we wanted recognition or anything, because we're, don't forget, we're born again Christians. Our hearts was on fire for God. I went to, just after we got <clears throat> born again, I just went to the, 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 the leaders and I said, um, you know, because we'd been taught that, you know, you have to do a work. So I said, what, what, what can I do? They said, what do you want to do? I said, anything. I, I just want to do anything. So they did give me something. And we committed to it. My husband was involved in there. I was involved in there. Most of the time we were first in, last out. We just put our hands in there to the plow. So we could, I could boldly stand on the word of God that said that. He said, he said, if you will save me, I'll bless your bread and your water. He said, there shall be none barren in your house. Even your cattle and your sheep shall not be barren. So I said, Lord, I know your word does not return to you, God. You are a faithful God. You are a covenant keeping God. So I'm counting on that word of yours. I have nothing to stand on to because you said our righteousness are like filthy rocks before so i'm not even going there it has nothing to do with that i'm coming on your faithfulness that i know i have been faithful so if you say that if i am faithful this is my reward then i'm holding you to your word 
declaration. The next was to be consistent. If you see, I said we started and, you know, sometimes we'll win a bit, then we'll catch ourselves and come back again, and then we'll win a bit, and then we'll catch ourselves, then we decided, no, 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 we've got to zoom in here and just be consistent. And it says, inconsistency lies the power. You know that if you do something consistently for 21 days, it becomes a habit? Consistently. 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 It's not you do it one day, and then you leave it, and you do it another day, and then you, and then you pick up again. No. Consistently. Consistency. At it. At it. At it. At it all the time. Inconsistency lies the power. Now, the next thing that I put down is to watch who you share your dreams with. You know, I found that um, the people who were outside church were not Christians. We're not a problem. I mean, they, they were not Christians anyway, so they wouldn't know any better. So that's not a problem. But the people in church, if anyone will hurt you, because they would say hurtful things, particularly when you have a challenge. And what I came to realize, I'm sharing with you from my heart, was that I realized that People would go with you only to a point. After a point, when it's not happening, <laughs> they step on this one, the must be, she's, there's something that she's committed. There's something, ah, but why? Why is it that you alone, you know, this is not happening? So they will give up. They would leave you. They will abandon you. You know, I heard, uh, 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 um, Minister, I'm just hesitant because I don't want to mention, I'm not going to mention names or anything, but someone that, this was in London, who was standing with me or professed to be standing with me. I mean, standing with me to the point of sometimes, you know, I'm sure someone was a very practical person, so would wear, you know, a bracelet or something and say, oh, you know, this particular one is to remind me to pray for you. I mean, that sort of and encouraging me and everything. Then one day, this person, and the person was Ghanaian, stood in the pulpit and said, you know, knowing perfectly well who was there, knowing perfectly well, because it was a very, very, very small church, he said, oh, you know, we are Ghanaians, we Ghanaians, when you are, when you are barren, it's a stigma. It's a stigma to your family, it's a stigma to... And guess what? Oh my goodness, that cut through me. I was shocked and I thought, what? This person who is standing with me, taking me to people, telling me about people's story, people's victories, and holding my hands and saying, you know, go here, go here. I thought, really? From that point, I realized, okay, Nana, this thing, you, your husband, and God, that's it. Don't think, because anyone will work with you for a while. When it is tiring, they get tired and they'll fall aside or say all kinds of things. So you have to watch who you share it with. I'll tell you some of the things that I did. Mother's Day. In our church in London, it was okay. I mean, because I suppose I say every church has a cult. So in our culture, we had, you know, people do things by faith. And you know, this is doing it by faith, that sort of thing. So Mother's Day, you know, that's when it cuts through you. And then in our church, you know, they'll give every, every, every mother, oh, mother, stand up. And then they'll give every mother a flower or something. And so I got to a point, I decided that, you know what, I'm going to stand. It was part of my faith corresponding action. As difficult as it was. Everybody there knew we didn't have to. It was not a secret. I mean, everybody there knew. So if I stand up, then why is she standing up? But I would stand. And, you know, I could feel, you can feel the heaviness in your heart, on your shoulder. I mean, you can just feel it. But I set my face like flint and I stand because I tell myself, you know, if you continue to do the same thing and you expect different results, you have a name. 
But if you are want, if you want really something desperately from God, you've got to do some bold things. Just like that woman who, the woman with the issue of blood, the Syrophoenician lady, she's the one that does it for me. I mean, she went to Jesus himself, or not somebody, Jesus himself went to him and Jesus tells him that, no, 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 no. You know, this thing is not for your kind. She, she said, Lord, yes. But even the crumbs under your table, and that's what the crumbs I can pick up. That one is dropped. So I will pick up the crumbs. You don't worry about the main thing. And Jesus was like, wow. He hasn't seen such faith before. So you have to watch who you share it with. I had people, you know, make fun. You know, someone just came up to me one morning. I mean, you, you know, I've gone to church in the morning. I'm minding my business. I am, I am minding my business. I have my own cross I'm carrying. I'm minding my business. And someone comes to you in the morning and he says, first thing in the morning on Sunday morning, you know, you too, you've been practicing for too long. This practice is too long. Just show us some results. I have not come to talk to you about anything. So you can imagine. First thing, Sunday morning, you prepared your heart and someone comes and it just cuts through you. And when it's like that, you know, it's a deep wound that is within you when it's to do with, um, uh, well, I suppose everybody's challenge is the same. But for me, it was a deep wound. And sometimes I don't intend to cry at all. I mean, I don't. Before I realize, I only realize I'm crying because I feel the tears running down my face. And I think, oh, dear. I just quickly wipe my face. I'm like, no, dear, I didn't want to do this. What is this? But it's because it's deep inside. It just comes out. So you have to watch the people. Not everybody would see what you are seeing and stand with you not everybody i heard of a story of a, a, a woman whose husband got so ill was taken to hospital you know all his organs were failing i mean all his organs packing up packing up everything was packing up he was put on a life support machine everything was packing up so they asked her to you know give her consent for her husband to be taken on the life support her pastor came and said you know what my dear this is a lost battle. She said, no. And do you know why? Because God had given her a picture of her leaving the hospital, pushing her husband in the wheelchair with balloons. And she had that picture. And her eyes were fixed and set on that picture. So she said, no. I don't care what I'm seeing. I don't care. I don't walk by sight. I walk by faith. The faith in the word of God that never fails. It always produces. I walk by that word. I, you will not turn off this life support. And indeed, and she went and put healing scriptures, plugged it in his ears, and was playing round the clock 24 hours playing around, playing, kept playing, playing. Guess what? Guess what? His organs started, everything started coming back. Everything started coming back. And she did walk out of that hospital, pushing her husband in the wheelchair with balloons, just as God gave her. You don't... And this comes from, you see, the tenacity and the boldness to refuse it was because she knew God and she knew what he had said to her. And she knew the picture he had given her, her alone. Nobody, he gave it to her. So she was boldly standing by because she knows God will not do that and just let me. It's not, he doesn't play games. So you have to watch who you share your dreams with, what you are trusting for, you have to watch it, especially when it comes to prayer of agreement because it is a hard thing. So be careful who you agree because the word says that if two shall agree as touching anything, it shall be done. But the agreement, you can, so you have to, you have to be careful who you share it with.
crucial. The next point I have written down is to be committed, which we've, 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 um, we've already um, talked about, touched on earlier, you know, because the word says that having done all to stand, stand there for. Having done all, having done all, stand. How do you stand? Having done all and you still can't see because he's faithful, reliable, dependable, unchanging God. And his word never fails. He's the God of impossibility. Anything too difficult or wonderful for him? So you stand. And when you are standing, you're not just standing idols, you are standing. Declaring. So the sword of the spirit is coming out of your mouth. You are declaring. And you're making sure that you're spending time in his presence. Not his word. You're reading the word. You know, that's why it says, in his presence is fullness of joy. I became a woman of worship because right from the beginning, I was not like a born again Christian. When we got married, I told you right from the beginning, one was there at the beginning. I became a Christian and everything. But I realized that when I just go and I worship, I just get so energized. It gives me this energy. And I am caught up in a whole different realm that just emboldens me to, I come out and I'm like, I'm ready to take on the world because it's me and God. So I just became such a, and I love worship. But guess what? The word also says that the joy of the Lord is your strength. It strengthens you. It has a way of strengthening you that I cannot explain to you. It's a spiritual thing. It strengthens you and gives you the whole courage to just go on. I can go on. It's not by yourself. Not by might, not by power, but by his spirit. But by my spirit, says the Lord. So watch be 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 committed be committed then the next the next point i put down is about sewing i'm sure you think hmm, sewing yes the word says that where your treasure is there your heart will be also if it is when you touch somebody's money, you've touched their life, you've touched their heart. You know, people get funny with money. So I'm very good friends, you know, and then money comes in and then <laughs> it gets something else, it becomes bitter. I mean, it just changes altogether. So you are not buying it, it is a faith action as well. Because you're saying, This is worth this to me. So you are sowing towards that. I can never tell you how much we sold because at different times. And it was not, it's not because we had the money. Sometimes we didn't. And whatever we had, we would put it in because we knew what we were doing. You see, the thing in this, let me just draw our attention to something. Where sometimes, you know, you're sewing or you're giving and you're thinking, ah, what is the church, what are they doing with it? That is not your business. That has nothing to do with anything. You are giving to God. And God knows you are giving to him. That's it. Whether they use it to do whatever, whatever is their problem. The reason for giving it is, you know, it. so you sow. But you name your seed. You don't just sow. Every time that you give, you name your seed. You give it with a, a name. You give it a seed, you give it a name, you give it a name. Guess what? A farmer won't just take a picture, maybe a picture of what, um, what, what should I say? Corn on the sheet and just, I'm believing God for this corn and even go and stand on the land. And say, yes, I'm giving God for a harvest for this corn. You know, yes, this corn, you see this lovely corn, you know, plant with the green leaves and the green, uh, yellow corn, nice and keep saying, oh, I'm believing God for, I'm believing God for, uh, Nothing will happen until he plants the seed. Nothing will happen until he plants the seed. And the interesting thing, 
There are three things that guide that. When you sow, you reap more than you sow. You reap a harvest. You sow a seed, you reap a harvest. It's about God doing exceedingly, abundantly, above what you think or ask. I saw so, we saw so many times. So, I mean, I, I, I never bother to record it. It's us, the spirit leads. It's not as though anybody comes and makes a financial demand. And you, no, 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 no. It's about you have to have a conviction in your heart. But even when you're giving an offering, you should name your seed. You should call it. You don't just cast it away like that. It's just like seed thrown away. Name your seed. Give it a name. I'm sowing towards this and put it in there. Whatever it's done with it, that's not your business. It's before God you are doing it. And God who sees everywhere and sees your heart, he's the one who would bring the reward. The next thing which is so important is to be grateful and thankful. We should be grateful. We should be grateful. We should be grateful. Yes. You might not have gotten it, what we are trusting for, but do you have life? Do you have health to be able to know that, oh, okay, you know, when it comes, I can, I can even just, you know, receive it, enjoy it. It's a blessing to wake up in the morning. Some people go to bed and they don't wake up. It says, Count your blessings, name them one by one. Then you see what the Lord has done. Be grateful. Let's be grateful. Let's be grateful for where we are. It's called enjoying where you are on the way to where you are going. Let's be grateful. Be grateful for Lord that I even live in a country where, you know, I get up and there's sunshine. Okay, now it's wet. But yes, it's only rain. You only just get wet. There's no chill in it. It's not cold that you are unable to. Okay, maybe we might say it's a cold season. But it's not compared to somewhere else. You need to dress appropriately. You know, we can get up and just have sunshine. So whether you have something to, you know, you don't, you can just go and sit under a tree and nice cool air will blow over you. You have some coconut juice and you drink and you are fine. It doesn't happen like that somewhere else. I mean, let's just be grateful because I believe that gratitude is even a, a, a magnet for, for, for miracles. It, it just draws that because just imagine, you just imagine if you have even a friend who is always you know, nye, 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 grumbling around you. You don't even want to have that friend. I mean, you don't want that person to, when a person calls and says, they're, they're like, oh no, I mean, really? But if you have someone who anytime they are with you, I mean, you feel encouraged, you feel strength. I mean, you go away knowing that this has been quality time spent together. If that person wants something, won't you go out of your way to do it for them, even when they haven't asked? Because they are such, the person is such a lovely person. I mean, our children. If you have a child who is always, oh dear. but if you have a child who like my children just tell me now that, you know, now they just shower me with mommy, I love you. I love you. And I'm thinking, oh, wow, I experienced so much love in my life before. Mommy, I love you. I mean, it's just like, you know, it's just like saying good morning. I love you so much, mommy. I'm thinking, what do I do? I mean, how can I? What can I, you know, what can, how can I make them happy? And even if they've done something wrong, I'm just thinking, what can I do? How, how can I bless them? We are made in the image of God. Same thing. I heard of a story where, and I think I'm just going to about end with a head of a story where an Arabian, one of these Arab kings, wanted um, um, to learn to play golf. So he asked for a renowned golfer an American, to come and teach him how to play golf. So this guy just happily, king of king, one of the king of the Arab countries, he was happily 
obliged. I mean, for him, it was an honor for the king to ask him to come and teach him to play golf. So he went, I mean, happily. So after what the king says, well, what can I give you? What can I, you know, how can I, I want to give you something? He said, oh, you don't need to, I, you know, just coming alone that I came to teach the king to play golf and he can play golf now. That alone is, is, is enough for me. The king said, no, but I really do want to give you something. So what can I give you? So he said, oh, well, I guess a golf club because I mean, that's, that's what the street he lives on. He, he's a golfer and he plays golf. So when on his on his way back on the aircraft, he was imagining, hmm, what was this club be like? Studded with gold or diamonds, encrusted with I mean, and he's just imagining, you know, ostentatious as you know. So he's thinking, hmm, you know, what is it going to be like anyway? So subsequently he went back. Every time he was looking out for this delivery, this package, because he asked for a club and he knows the king has the ability of well over a million times over to give him that club a club no delivery was coming up until one day he saw a mail and he opened the mail a registered mail with a registered certificate that now it says now you are the owner of a 500 acre land golf club so he wanted a golf club and the king because kings think big gave him a club <laughs> you know that's how God, he does exceedingly abundantly above what we ask him. But first, when you are grateful, grateful and thankful for where we are, yes, we haven't arrived. It's called enjoying where you are on the way to where you're going. You know, my husband and I got a point where this was not like we have zeroed it. Oh no, my goodness. It was a burning thing in me that could never be distinguished. I mean, it could never, 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 never be, be, be killed. It was burning in me. But we told ourselves that we've got to get on with life. 21 years of waiting. What, we're just going to sit there and waste away? Yes, it did affect me at the beginning in the sense that it changed my course, you know, the course of my career and everything, because I just put myself on hold and I said, no, Lord, uh -uh, I'm waiting for this. And at a point, I had to just get myself together and realize it's not happening, not yet. So go on. So we would pick ourselves up. Go on, holiday. Go. I mean, we just have to just pick pack our bags and where we were, it was easy to do that because you can just jump on the Euro tunnel, you're in Paris for a weekend. It's not like here where you have to go and fly, you know, it was much easier to access. So we just did travel, enjoyed the time. Yes. Did we have that burning desire? Yes. Did we take it off? No. But you know what I made sure was anytime anyone asked me and you had it several times over several times those who knew and those who didn't know those who were doing it deliberately and all uh, everything else i say oh how are the children i said you don't have any children yet because one thing you have to be careful about is what you speak death and life are in the power of the tongue the word says death and life are in the power of the tongue. So you have to watch what you say. You might go in there, you are praying, you're doing everything. And then somebody asks you, and the enemy, you know, he's cunning. So we have, don't have to be ignorant of his devices. He will bring it in so authentic. So you should be ready, ready for, if someone asks me this or asks me that, make sure you are, have your answer ready. That does not cancel, negate everything you have done until that point, zeroed it out. So you have to start all over again. You've got to be careful what you say. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. It says you shall declare a thing and it shall be established. There's absolutely nothing that God cannot do. He gives life to the dead and calls those things that be not as though they are. I'm not just saying these are scriptures. I have lived this. So it doesn't matter what it is. Having done all to stand 
stunned, stunned, and keep the sword of the spirit coming out. Staying focused, just doing, and God will make it happen. You know, I knew there was some things that were holding this whole thing from manifesting because I started, I was feeling different, you know, I was having different experiences and all. And then somebody gave me a book called When the Fig Tree Does Not Blossom. It was a Nigerian lady. Actually, she, she was a, a pastor. She was, you know, she was married to a pastor. She was a pastor's wife. And she wrote that book, a greenish book, you know, a long time ago. When I read it, I thought, my goodness, this is the street I live on. Everything she was describing was what I was experiencing. And she was saying, you know, what the meanings of those things were. I was horrified. The interesting thing was the church that we were in. Yes, Apostle was an excellent teacher of the word, but did not believe in anything else. So it's just the word, yes. Absolutely, it's the word. But sometimes there are certain things that need to be dealt with for manifestation. So you know what? All the time I was in the UK, I prayed. I used to pray. I said, Lord, because I knew, I mean, you know, some of the things I would be able to share out here like that. But experiences I was having, and I knew these were not normal. So I said, Lord, lead me to that person of yours, that anointed person of yours, who will be able to help me deal with this. And indeed, when we came to Ghana, shortly after we came to Ghana, he did lead me. I didn't go seeking uh, because I'm not the kind that you tell me, oh, there's prophecy here. No, not, no, 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 no. I say, if God is looking for me, he will find me and give me my prophecy wherever I am. So I don't chase, they say prophecy here today. It does not even interest me. It just so happened. Something happened. And then we met this person. And then in the process, she found out that we didn't have a child. And after that issue had been dealt with, this person decided, I am going to hold your hand and walk through. When I started sharing my experiences with her, she was like, my goodness, you had some, this is, and she was just telling me the meaning. This means this, is, I thought to myself, oh my goodness. She prayed with me. So when that thing obviously was taking away, then the road was clear and the manifestation came into being. But I was praying. I was doing everything. So God was with me because he kept us. He preserved us. Even in that time when all that was happening, he preserved us because something worse could have happened, but he still preserved us until the manifestation. And guess what? That's what I end with. I had this vain thing, you know, I was just, I just say, oh Lord, you know, renew my youth, renew my, until the children can say, renew my youth, not for anything else, but for the vanity of, you know, so that I still look young. I don't look old, you know, when I have my children, I don't look low. I did not know the depth of what I was asking for. I didn't know. I needed all the energy and twice as much to be able to take care of what he was giving me. When I fell pregnant, it took me along before that time in Agape. I had never done it since we came to Ghana. And in Agape, one day I decided I am going to do this. My husband was at the back at the time and it was Mother's Day. Nobody would know because I did it. And my husband saw me and said, oh, well, you know, mothers, you know, get up and ask if we have an Agape. That, that year, that's what they did. All mothers and they celebrate her. Hell yeah, hello, you know, well then, congratulations, da 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 da. And then they go, okay, so, you know, you say, I stood there and I knew it was the enemy just shouting because he knew what was I doing, what I was doing. And this was two years before the manifestation of our children. Just head, as though everybody there was looking at me thinking what are you doing what do you think who do you think you're fooling that's what i kept hearing who do you think you're fooling you you, you must be joking who, who, who are you kidding here i mean what what is this is this where you have come to is this what has it has come to now with you what i stood up by the time they said okay 
if you have more, if you don't have, if you have just one child, sit down. I quickly just drop, boom, because the pressure was too much. But guess what? I had broken through something. I didn't know. So after the service, I asked my husband, I said, I stood up, did you, did you see me? He said, yes, I did. I said, oh, you did? He said, yes, I did. I said, oh, okay. <laughs> you know, but that was just me. I hadn't talked to anybody. I hadn't said anything. I just felt led that day to just get up. I said, I'm going to just do the unusual there because I've got to do something that is unusual to break through this whole thing. And when I felt pregnant, every day, just before I felt pregnant, God told me, he told me audibly, Nana, I'll prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. I'll prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. I'll prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. I said, okay. It was head knowledge to me until I got pregnant. And I was not living. I was leaving my husband because I was in hiring. I was in quarantine. I was giving strict instructions, apart from the fact that I was on bed rest anyway. So I was in quarantine, couldn't go nowhere. Every morning I wake up, I look at my stomach and I'll look at myself in the mirror and say, Lord, is this real? Is this true? I'm not dreaming. I'm not imagining this. And then I would hear him repeat me, Nana. Didn't I tell you that I'll prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies? Preparation, Nana, takes time. I didn't say lay a table. I said prepare and preparation takes time. Now, the birth of the girls and all is one whole testimony that I don't know if I have time to share that. But I want to end with just encouraging you and telling you that it doesn't matter what it is. If only ye can believe, all things are possible to him that believes. How do you wait in that process? In time? in worship, declaring, keeping your eye focused on the word, watching who you're talking to, you surround your people with faithful people who would lift you up, encourage you, you are committed. And timing, I can't tell. But God comes in and he does beyond what you think or imagine. We are asking for a boy and a girl. Guess what? All the scans I had in Ghana couldn't tell me what we were having. They said, all we can tell is you have told babies. I said, mm-hmm, yeah. yeah. <laughs> tell, me, tell me something new. My husband is tall. I am relatively tall. My, my family are all tall. So yes, tell me something new. And I said, oh, Ghana, we have dated equipment. What's this? You can't even tell me so that I know. I went to the UK and I had four scans, none of them could tell us what we were having until the day of delivery. When my first um, daughter came out, they said, it's a girl. I said, uh -huh, yeah, of course, <laughs> yes, it's a girl. Then the second one came and said, another girl. We both went, what? But you know, just before then, two weeks before I delivered, because I was in hiding, I, you know, I'm, I, I was in quarantine, you know, couldn't do anything. Everything was, you know, because my whole pregnancy was under attack. So I had to, I had strict instructions to stay away. Only saw who needed to see me. So my husband and I went to see Reverend Mrs. Wickham and Reverend Wickham just to, after, I think I was about five months then, you know. But just two weeks before we were not here, and my husband was talking to his father. I mean, you can imagine his father was in his 80s, you know, his only son, da, da, da. So he hadn't seen me around for a while. We didn't realize that he had noticed because we sort of live, we live in the same, you know, um, he lives in the main house and we live in the outhouse. And then 
he kept asking my husband because my, hus my father-in-law is someone who doesn't pry into your business. You know, it's a very, but this time I thought he, I he thought, no, no, how, what's going on? You know, so he said, why? Are you people quarreling? He, my husband said, no. He said, but why? I haven't seen him in a long time. What's going on? Then he said, well, I have something to tell you, but you must promise. So he went to his father's office and said, I'm going to tell you something something and you must promise not to say anything to anybody he said and i nice expecting oh goodness you can imagine then he said well i haven't finished she's expecting twins you can imagine so two weeks before i delivered we had our name for a boy and a girl my husband was just checking with his father because he's a guy so guys have the names and, and we didn't want to give them the twin names because those twin names have all sorts of things attached to them and we didn't want that. That's no, they come from God and we wanted it to be that. So we asked, he was asking him, you know, for the boys' names and then, um, you know, a boy and a girl. And then his father said, but if there are two girls and my husband said, oh, oh, okay. We haven't thought about it. He said, well, if they are two girls, this is what their names would be. And we had Christian names, I mean, names for boy and a girl. So we had only one name for a girl. So two weeks, we quickly had to find a name for a girl. And we were not just because the name for our daughter Joda was one that we've had for a long time and we, you know, had prayed about it and everything. So we had to now think, pray, go into the scripture, think, pray, and then we got Nessa, which is miracle of God in Hebrew, because Hebrew Ness means miracle. So Nessa, it's female miracle, miracle of God. And that's how, so two weeks to the time is when we just said, okay, just in case it becomes two girls, but we were sure we were having a boy and a girl. On the day of delivery was when we said, another girl, we thought, what? And I said, you know, Lord, I can't thank you enough for what you've done for me. When at 51, had been written off, nobody would say, but yes, I had. And then God suddenly comes. To me. So I said all this just to hoping that it serves as an encouragement for you to know that we serve a God of impossibility. There's nothing that He cannot do. Just trust, believe. Having done all to stand, stand. Make sure that your words align with the word of God. Don't say anything contrary to cancel it, not even casually. And just be grateful, be grateful, a thankful heart. Thank God for where you are, that he's keeping you. You see, when we thank God, for not for the thing where you are whatever the enemy intends for your evil he turns it around for your good so i hope you're going away encouraged strengthened direction has become clear ready to go and possess what already belongs to you we are blood-bought children of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. It's your birthright. So, be blessed. Amen. Mighty, mighty God, we worship you today. We give you all the praise as we lift our hands to you. With pleasure in our hearts, we raise our voice and say, everything written about you is great. Mighty, mighty God, Lord, we worship you today and we give you all the praise as we lift our hands to you with pleasure in our hearts we raise our voice to say everything written about you is great oh you are great 
are great. You are great. Oh, you are great. Oh, you are great. Ah, you are great. Oh, you are great. Oh, you are great. Oh, you are great. Oh, you are great. Hallelujah. We just want to exalt the name of God. You just want to worship the Lord. I want you to just praise the Lord. Oh, yes, we will ask questions. But right now, what shall we say to these things? What then shall we say to these things? What is our response to these things? Do you not have the edge to bow down before this God? Do you not have that impression that you must bow in worship? That you must exalt and praise his name and say there is no God like you we adore you, no yes. God like this. yes. But Who can one, compare to the you? The covenant keeping God, yes. Alpha no. and Omega. No. Who is there like our God? No. Yahweh, we honor no. you, Lord. We, we worship you, we, we exalt you, we exalt you, you. We, we, we adore you. 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 you <laughs> the power of Jesus' name, let angels prostrate for bring forth Lord, 
Jesus. I thank God and I believe we all bless the Lord for all that he has done and for the wonderful testimony that the Lord has built up. He has cooked it himself to display his glory and his honor to tell us that Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today and forever. He never changes his faith. In every respect, he is faithful. There is nobody, nobody who can stand to accuse him that he has been found unfaithful, that he has been found to be a liar, that he has been found. Nobody can accuse God of unrighteousness, Mm. of a lack of faithfulness, of being untrustworthy. Our Mm. God is faithful. If somebody gives up, it's not God. It is is not God. If somebody you, falls by the roadside, it is not God. It is not no, God. It is not no, God at all. It is not no, God. Hallelujah. Is, amen. Mm. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So, Thank you, Lord Jesus. My dear sister, Aunt Nana, and um, there's a question that somebody asked uh, um, and said for us to talk about. She wanted to okay. know that when... When there were times when you were really low, because there yes. are times when things hit you, and you've mentioned a few, you know, situations and scenarios. How do you yes. deal with those? How do you come out okay. of those? How do you handle yourself? What do you look at? What do you do? Okay, that is why it's important to have a relationship with God. And every time you come before him and you worship him, you know, it will be, it's between you and God. It's a personal, I'm sorry, one track walk with you and God. 
Do you go to God? Sometimes what you have to really guard against though is the person might have done something that, you know, I mean, whatever it is that brought about that low position could be somebody said something or, you know, or just you're just weary of the weight. Just remind yourself of the goodness of God. Just go before him in worship. In prayer, that's when they say you bring sacrifice of praise. Mm -hmm. Just go before him. As you do that, the weight will be lifted. Trust me. And the joy of the Lord will become your strength. You know, you walk out there, somebody will see who really knows what you're going through and think, excuse me, what's going on with this person? I mean, we can't see that anything has changed. But in your spirit, you are strengthened. In those low times, oh, I had several. I mean, you can imagine, 21 years, yes, I had several. But what I made sure was irrespective, I never made anything negative come out of my mouth to contradict what I was believing God for, to cancel everything I've been doing spiritually, and just go before God. If it's someone who's hurt me or whatever it is, I just say, Lord, forgive and help me release this person because there's no place for me to hold that. But just spend time, worship and praise at his feet. Come bow down at his feet, Lord Jesus. He says, in your presence, there's fullness of joy. As, what should I say? Casual or as ordinary as it might sound, that is where it is that. It's not about talking to anybody or anything. It's just you and God. Go before him and worship because that is a sacrifice of praise. It's a sacrifice of worship. God sees it. He's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. He sees it. He sees it and knows that, yes, you trust him. You are holding on to him. And that irrespective of how you're feeling or what is going on, your eye is still on him. That's what you do. Amen. I hope that has answered the question. I hope it's provided some answer. Unless there's another dimension to it that is not known, because obviously I would answer based on what is presented, if you see what I mean. So yes, yes, yes. That that's fine. I think that that gives us a good platform indeed. Right. We thank God. Ha, huh, wonderful. So, sis, would you would you want to lead us in in prayer or worship, whatever the Lord uh, leads you to? Um, mm -hmm. we've got about uh, ten fifteen minutes so that okay. we we wrap up this wonderful session that the Lord has enabled you to to activate with us. Okay, all right. So let's go before Him in worship. I that's my street I live on. You know. <laughs> And I believe that um, with where we are now, I know everybody has their different challenges that they are faced with and everything. But when we bring it all to his feet in worship, he deals with all of it. So let's go before him. Thank you, Jesus. You are God from beginning to there's no place for argument. You are God all by yourself. Oh, you are God from beginning to the end. There's no place for argument. You are God all by yourself. You have times and seasons in your hands. You call for light out of darkness. You don't need a man to be the God you are. You have 
chosen to call us your own. Oh, you are God from beginning to the end. There's mm -hmm. no place for argument. You are God all by yourself. How great you are. How great you are. How great you are. Lord, how great you are. Father, we come before you this evening and I thank you that there is no distance in the spirit. And as your word tells us that if two or more of us are gathered in your name, you are with us. So, Father, we know you are with us. Father, you know everybody who is hearing me. You know what challenges they are dealing with. You know all the different heads, the situations. You know everything that surrounds it. But, Lord, we come before you this evening saying that we have no other help but you. But you are all the help that we need because you are a faithful God. You are a reliable God, dependable God, unchanging God, trustworthy God, King of kings and Lord of lords. The one who was, who is, and who is to come. The God of impossibility. Is anything too difficult or wonderful for you, Lord? What can't you do, Lord? We look to you and you alone as the author and finisher of our faith. Father, we are holding on to you. I ask, Lord, that you strengthen you deliver, you bring direction, you bring clarity, you bring peace. I speak peace to any troubled situation. I speak peace. And I thank you that we shall be anxious for nothing. Lord, we thank you that you said that if two of us shall agree, as touching anything, it shall be established. And Lord, we are more than two. Father, we know that your word tells us, you never leave us nor forsake us. You are always with us. And you are a good God. You are a loving God. We know that. We accept that. We have settled that in our spirits. So we come before you, Lord. I come before you with all my sisters, Father, who are hearing me now. And I ask, precious Holy Spirit, you minister to each one of them. And you hear them. Bring deliverance, Lord. Bring direction, Lord. Father, sharpen their spiritual antennas, Lord. Let them see clarity, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We are trusting in you. We are looking to you and you alone. And we thank you that your word never fails and that it accomplishes that for which it is sent forth to do. Thank you. Thank you, ancient of days. Thank you. Thank you, king of kings. Thank you, the one and only true living God. We thank you, all powerful God. Show yourself strong. Father, we know that you have provided for everything in your word. Help us. Help your children. They've come before you this evening, Lord, with their hearts open. You said that if we seek you, we will find you. I did that. And every step by step, you led us and guided us. Lord, lead them, guide them, show them, 
open their eyes in the name of Jesus. Deliver them. Where healing is needed, Lord, your word tells us that by his stripes we were healed. These are not but children of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Healing is their birthright. So we speak to whichever situation and we tell you to stop and get out. You do not belong in the name of Jesus. Father, where peace is needed, Lord, I speak your peace. Father, I speak restoration in the name of Jesus. Father, I speak direction, bring clarity of direction. And if confirmation is needed, Lord, you provide that confirmation. However, that person will understand and embrace it and know that it is confirmation from you. Bring that confirmation. Glorify yourself in their lives that their joy will be full. I know that you didn't just bless me with these children just for me to become a mother. I know it was to also hold other people's hands and help them cross over. Thank you. Thank you that indeed tonight they have crossed over. They have moved from a place of bondage, a place of destitute, a place of desperation, a place, a place of where they think all oh, hope is gone. Restore hope, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we give you praise. We give you thanks. We give you glory. We give you honor. We worship you, Lord. We worship you. We worship you. We exalt you. We magnify you. And we say thank you. Because we know you have heard us. And your word says that when we pray, you hear us. And you do what we've said according to your word and your will. So Lord, we thank you. Thank you for the testimonies, Father. Thank you for the numerous testimonies that are going to come out. Father, not just even from the people that are here, but those that they would even just go and just share your goodness with that would encourage and strengthen them. Lord, that is what the purpose of everything you do for us is. So we thank you. We thank you for amazing, unusual, uncommon testimonies, Lord, to your glory and your glory and loan, Father. Yes, Lord. Nobody else's, Lord. To your glory and your glory alone. We give you praise, Father. We give you thanks. We give you glory. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. In Jesus name. Amen. 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 Thank you, sis. God really, really bless you. Um, dear sisters, I think it's, it's, it's good and worthy and appropriate that we also pray for our sister, for their family and for their home and for every purpose of God concerning their lives as God himself has brought them this far. And as God himself has used them for signs and for wonders and to achieve his own purposes, we want to stand together and just honor God for their lives and ask the Lord to do more. Ask the Lord that every good purpose concerning them shall be established, that the Lord should pour more oil upon them and continue to keep them. And may he cause the, the, his goodness to echo through generations. Oh, generations will speak of his goodness and will speak of what God has done. Please, let's pray for our sister. Let's pray for their household in the name of Jesus. Let's pray in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Yes, our, our brothers also joined us. Brothers, help us pray for our, our dear sister and the family also. We appreciate your presence with us tonight. We are praying for us.
Sister, in the name of Jesus, Father, we give you glory. That you we give you honor. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for our sister. Oh, Barika Tasenderia Makadoso. What a privilege it is, oh God, that you choose to use us to depict a story, to show your power and might. Lord, you sustain and do great and mighty things. That your name be exalted above all else. Go, oh, Lord, our God. There is none like you. We we ask, oh Father, that your grace will continue to be multiplied upon this home and this family. Lord, this testimony is one of many. And Lord, we are praying that there shall be more and more and more. Lord, let the oil never ever run out, Lord, but new grace and new anointing for each moment and for each day. Lord, we pray for generational blessings. Lord, we pray for the establishment of new heritage, heritages and inheritances that is of the Lord that will speak into years, into generations unto those yet unborn. Lord of hosts, that your name will be exalted. Protect them round about, oh God, and let their feet always be secure upon the rock of Christ Jesus. We pray in the name of Jesus that Lord, they will continue to, to shine with your name, shine with your praise, glow, shout out your praise. They, they shall never run out of testimony of grace, of uh, songs of praise, acknowledgement of God. They shall never run out. They will always have one story or the other to tell that demonstrates what a great God that they have. Lord, in this generation, in the coming generations and every generation, oh God, in the name of Jesus, we bless your name, oh Lord. Thank you for doing this for us. Thank you for honoring yourself in our lives. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Pastor Adline, can I invite you to please um, close us in prayer, pray for our sister, and, and wrap all of this up in prayer, even as we, we end tonight's very wonderful session. And of course, tonight, I also want to acknowledge the, the, the men in our lives who have joined us, and we are grateful to God. It's, it's, it's sisters and brothers tonight because God has a purpose for tonight's conversation. So we, we really, really are very pleased. I'm not going into, I'm not going into a, a, a lot of detail, I know. I'll leave that to, to they who may want to give details, but we praise God. Uh, Pastor Adline, please. If yes, you, you okay. like. thank you so much, sister. Thank you. Thank you so much also. Um, our big sister Nana, that was really awesome. You have greatly encouraged us and yes. faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. And even as we have heard you, as you have talked about your journey and as you have spoken about the word that kept you strong through it all, we, we are very grateful. Um, our faith has really been, has gone up and, and we are grateful indeed. I'm going to just pray for you and for all of us right now. Let's pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you so much for this time. Lord, we are grateful unto you. We are grateful unto you for the testimony that we have heard. Father, it gladdens our heart and it brings great glory to you, Lord. When we look at what you have done in this couple's life, Father, that your promises are indeed yea and amen, that they stood on the word of God and indeed there is no word of yours that ever falls to the ground, that indeed you confirmed that your word does not return void, that it really accomplishes the purpose for which you sent it. Father, I thank you so much that the ladies on this platform have been encouraged, that we have been greatly strengthened. Most of us identify with the testimony that our Sister Nana shared. Some of us are also encouraged in our various areas, in the areas of our health, finances, in areas of childbirth, in parenting, in being a wife. We have been encouraged to continue to trust you and not to give up because we do, we do reap a reward if we don't give up. I thank you for the vessel of honor that you minister 
connected through to us tonight. I thank you for her life, for her husband, for the children. I commit them into your hands. I soak them the blood of Jesus. I pray, oh Father, that this family will be like a tree that is planted by streams of water, that they will yield their fruit in season, that their leaf will never wither in the name of Jesus, that whatever they do shall prosper, that every word that comes out of their mouth will be words of wisdom that will give counsel, will give direction to people. It will give light. It will encourage people. It will be a word in season. I thank you, oh God, that because of their testimony, the enemy has been overcome. We overcame the enemy by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. Tonight, I pray that the enemy has been overcome in all of our lives in the name of Jesus. For those who are feeling like giving up, I pray that they have been strengthened tonight in the name of Jesus. I thank you, oh God, Father, for this vessel of honor. I pray that the virtue that has gone out of her and the power that has gone out of her will be replenished in the name of Jesus, but not just replenished in equal measure. It will be replenished to the point of overflow, to greater measure in the name of Jesus. Whatever she has invested in us tonight, Lord, let it be a seed. And for that, give her a harvest. As she has given to us, give back to her good measure measure pressed down shaking together pour it into her bosom bless her and the husband the children everyone connected to her in the name of jesus her ministry wherever she finds herself let her be the one who holds another's hands and walks with them along the journey in the name of jesus those with weeping eyes that encounter her may they live with joy in the name of jesus i thank you also for all of the wives right now i pray father that even as these women have been waiting up on you day and night day and night trusting you i know that you are taking their faith to a new level and you are increasing their strength that they are mounting up with wings as eagles i say thank you for your promises that is strengthening each and every one of us that we in turn will be a blessing unto others beginning right from our own homes in the name of jesus that it caused the testimonies to begin to overflow let it be so plenty that we wouldn't even be able to put them all together week after week every time that we meet let there be testimonies flowing over for your glory let every testimony give you glory in the name of jesus i give you praise i give you glory i thank you i praise you and i say that father you're a miracle working god you are a prison shaking savior you are a chain breaker you are a way maker you are a mighty God, you are the one who gives twins to the one who least expected. You are the one who answers our prayers. You are the one who never fails. I pray, oh God, that through all of these testimonies and through the how-to series and through the prayers, cause each and every one of us to know you personally, to have a relationship with you, to adore you, to fall in love with you, to, to, to describe you in a way that just means so much just to us in that secret place. I thank you, Lord. I give you praise. As we are all going back home, Father, cause us to have a good night, too, that you continue to speak to us, Lord, even in our dreams. Even in our dreams you continue to speak to us and minister to us, Father. Have your way, Lord. I give you praise and I give you glory and I thank you that in all of this be thou forever magnified in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 God bless you. Thank you so much, Pastor Adeline. Thank you again, our sister Nana. Our sister Nana Abdul, God richly, richly bless you. And yes, Thank sisters, you. we are grateful God has brought us to this point together. And I believe it is because he is continuing onward and forward with us. And so all that the Lord has given us tonight, let's savor it in our hearts, grow it, meditate upon it, go further, go deeper with him, and his name will be glorified. God willing, tomorrow night, we are meeting at nine o'clock, nine to 10 as usual. And it's a time of praise, testimony, thanksgiving, worship. It's a time of the Lord's presence. And I pray that everyone, as many of us as can make that time, please do make that time. Next week in the How To series, we'll be looking at how to retain the testimony that you have, you have gained, how to retain 
your victory after you have won it through all this that we have learned and all of that? How do you continue to walk victoriously after the victory has been manifested in your life? Make a date with us at 8 p.m. next week, Saturday, and we will hear more of God's great, great goodness and all that he has purposed for us. Please let us share the grace. And so may the grace, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ.